morning, everybody. I am Abby Elizabeth, and this is the Earthen Vessels channel. This is a channel for Christian women, but anyone is welcome to listen. Praise be to the Most High God, who has given us another day in which we can consider His Holy Word and learn to walk in His ways. For those of us who speak English, the King James Version of the Holy Bible is the Word of God. I have a message to those of you who are my sisters in Jesus Christ, or those of you who are interested in Christianity and the way of truth, about prudence. Now, prudence is something that many people don't understand what it is, and so we want to understand what it is, where it comes from, and how it is that we can grow in this area, my sisters, once we have become a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. So prudence is not to be a prude at all. And a lot of people, because of the beginning of the word, they think that has something to do with um, being kind of constrained in an ugly way and not, not free to, to be beautiful or free to be expressive of um, things that are normal for a person to express. So it's about being stringently controlled, kind of spiritually constipated, as it were. That's not what prudence is. And so when we're trying to understand what God wants from us and we see the word prudence in the scripture, we would consider in the scripture what God has to say about it. So we read in the Holy Word of God that a prudent wife is from the Lord. So what is prudence? And, and verily, whether you're a wife or not at this time, it is, a, it is a characteristic that all godly women would cultivate because it is something that is an attribute of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ and something that we would seek after as well. Prudence is something that we therefore would understand from the Word of God. And I want to show you what the Word of God has to say about that, starting in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse. Let's begin here. Um, hallelujah. Hold on just a moment while I locate this. Excuse me. Ephesians chapter 1. Let's um, start reading here in verse 3. And may the Lord bless the reading of his holy word today. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence. Here we can see that God the Father has the attributes of wisdom and prudence. And we, as his people who have been adopted into his family, if we've been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of our sins, we seek to walk as Jesus Christ walked, and we follow in the footsteps of the Master. So we try to do our best to live as Jesus Christ lived. So let's go to Second Chronicles, way back in the Old Testament. And let's read in Second Chronicles chapter 2. And by the way, please turn with me in your Holy Bible if you're able to, because when we read the scripture for ourselves, it's very different than if somebody else tells us, tells us what it says. And verily, we want to make the truth our own. Jesus Christ said, If ye continue in my word, then ye are my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and ye shall and the truth shall make you free. Pardon me. So we want to continue in the word of God for ourselves. And while I, I'm glad that you're here and that you're listening to what I have to say, I would encourage you to 
search the scriptures that are provided in the description box under this video for yourself to make the truth your own. Otherwise, it might just seem like one more religious opinion. So in Second Chronicles, chapter 2, let's read here a prophecy about the Lord Jesus Christ. And we'll read here um, verse 12. Hiram said, moreover, blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who that made heaven and earth, who has given to David the king a wise son, endued with prudence and understanding, that might build an house for the Lord and an house for his kingdom. Now, originally, this was spoken about Solomon, but we know that Solomon departed from the one true God and began at the end of his life to worship idols. And so Jesus Christ has come to build a spiritual house for the glory of God in which God will abide. And we, his people, are living stones. So Jesus Christ is the wise son endued with prudence and understanding that might build a house for the Lord and a house for his kingdom. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So prudence, what is prudence? We know what prudence is not. What is prudence? Well, we can understand that from the scripture. Let's turn now to Proverbs chapter 8 and verse 12. And of course, the Proverbs contain a lot of wisdom. And those of us who want to be wise, we often resort to the Proverbs to understand what wisdom is and what prudence is. So we read in verse 12, I, wisdom, dwell with prudence and find out knowledge of witty inventions. So wisdom is something that God's people obtain from abiding in the word of God. That is where wisdom is. If we want to know the things that God thinks and be like Jesus Christ, we cannot do so by figuring it out. Rather, we can do that by abiding in the word of God. And when we do that, wisdom is imparted to us. And here we see that wisdom abides with prudence. So let's go now to Proverbs chapter 15. <clears throat> Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 5, to understand a little bit more about what prudence is. A fool despiseth his father's instruction, but he that regardeth reproof is prudent. So we can see that prudence has to do with allowing our Heavenly Father to correct us sometimes when we're out of the way. We read in Psalm 23, for example, of the great shepherd, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. So the rod of correction is not something that a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ despises because sometimes we need to be corrected. So when we regard reproof, we are prudent. So that is allowing wisdom to be imparted to us by the rod of correction. And this comes best when we allow the word of God to correct us. When we're looking into the scripture and we see something in our heart or in our thinking, in our actions or our words that is not in alignment with scripture. And then when we see that, we would repent of it and bring it before the Lord and ask him for grace to be able to not only have wisdom, but to have prudence. And I would say to you that prudence is wisdom and action. Wisdom and action. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 8. The pr wisdom of the prudent is to understand his way, but the folly of fools is deceit. 
So prudence helps us to understand the right way to go. And again, that is something we as God's people get when we are abiding in the presence of God by seeking him in prayer and in his holy word. And I want to show this principle to you if we turn now to the letter that James wrote, the general epistle of James, chapter 1. And let's read here, starting in verse 2. My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. So if we lack wisdom, where do we get it? Well, we go to the Lord our God and ask him to give it to us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we know if we ask anything in prayer that's according to his will, we shall receive it. And this is, of course, according to his will, that the Lord's people would be wise and prudent. Now, we understand as godly women that we would want to be prudent um, custodians of our husband's finances, and we would want to take the things that he gives us in provision and increase them by our own work. We can read of that particularly in Proverbs chapter 31, that a woman who is a servant to her husband brings forth much goodness into his life in his household by the labors that she does. But she also blesses her husband and her children and those around her, the poor, those that she witnesses to daily in the course of her affairs with her kindness and with her wisdom. So let's read that. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 31, particularly to read that one portion, that prudence is not just about managing a household or managing finances. It has to do with what we speak. So we read here in verse 25, we read, Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. She openeth her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. So prudence has to do also with how we conduct ourselves, my sister, and my sisters, pardon me. It would relate to having wisdom and discretion in how we deal with people. And this is something that we grow in the longer we walk with the Lord. And certainly I am still growing in this. And there's been many times when the Lord has had to correct me. So prudence is something that we would cultivate as a godly woman. And that means that the things that we do and say, we would bring into alignment with the holy word of God. We would build our house upon that rock, which is to be obedient to the word of God. Jesus Christ said, he he that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, he is as one who builds his house upon a rock. And the storm comes and the wind blows, but this house is strong and does not fall. Prudence has to do with the wisdom that we obtain from abiding in God's word and how we apply that to our own conduct, how we regulate our household, how we raise our children, and also how we regulate our speech, that we hold ourselves to use discretion in knowing what to say and what not to say, what to do and what not to do. So let's go to Proverbs chapter 27 and verse 12. This is written in more than one place, but let's read this verse here so we know about some of the things that prudence will do for us when we exercise wisdom in our lives. A prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. So when we have wisdom, 
about things that we are warned about in the Holy Scripture, whether it be our how we speak, how we act, the, the way we take care of our finances or serve our husband or raise our children, that that helps us to foresee evil and avoid it and not be part of it. That is one of the blessings of prudence. Let's go now to Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 21. He that begetteth, pardon me, Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 21. I was in Proverbs 17. The wise in heart shall be called prudent, and the sweetness of the lips increaseth learning. Understanding is a wellspring of life unto him that hath it, but the instruction of fools is folly. So we get wisdom in our hearts, my sister, when we continue in the word of God, when we do the things that Jesus Christ commanded. We realize that the things God has given us to do are good, and we devote ourselves to doing good things unto those around us, whether it's serving them with good food or keeping the house clean or or helping the children to know right from wrong, or whether it is speaking a kind word to someone who is hurting, or whether it is to speak wisdom in a situation where there is confusion. Prudence is something, prudence is something that verily gives us the ability to avoid evil and also to bring forth good fruit for the kingdom of God. And it's very pleasing unto the Lord when we seek these things from him. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So spiritual discernment tells us that it is foolish to spend every nickel we have on on things that are frivolous and are passing away. We would use our finances for the glory of God and for the benefit and provision of our family and for the increase of our husband's household. Our energies and our work would be prudently devoted to impart blessings as a servant in God's house, first and foremost, but in our husband's house, if we're married, and in the raising of our children and our dealings with those who are in the body of Christ. Prudence is something we would cultivate because it will keep us from evil, but it will also enable us to serve Jesus Christ in righteousness, bringing forth fruit for his kingdom. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So I pray this message has been edifying unto those of you who are wondering about prudence and that we all would consider these things and more and more seek to become like the Lord Jesus Christ in our daily walk, in our conversation, and the manner with which we serve him. Because verily I say unto you, the Lord regards his people and he cares very much how we act and how we speak and what we do as his servants. And he will bless us in this life and in the world to come if we are found faithful in doing these things. I remain here for you. Feel free to email me if you like. And my email is always in the description box right underneath the video. And may the word of God go forth today and uplift and bless many in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.